just really quickly, in terms of um, portfolios, I, I, I work on with students. Um, I, I actually visit this uh, wiki page that Jess Wilson, uh, who's in the audience right now, shared a number of years ago, I think at a dynamic landscapes conference called Cool Tools for Schools, I think. And, and I share that with my students. There are hundreds and hundreds of tools, digital online tools, that almost anyone can find some, you know, some connection with. So I have students who maybe are interested in music and they're not strong writers or they're, they're a little shyer in terms of being able to share their writing, but all of a sudden they have a music application and they're creating a soundtrack and a piece of music that reflects just as well as, say, a written piece or using Wordle, for instance, or a drawing tool. So I, I've found that to be the answer to students um, and, and giving them the choice to choose what application or what, what tool they might want to use that is, you know, connects to their, their intelligence or skill sets. So. Was that web tools for you to use? It's cool tools for schools. There's another one, a really good one, web tools for number you to use. It's also oh. awesome. Okay, cool. Check that out. Not sure how far as you're going to this. Ah, so I think that actually connects to a thought I had prior to that, which is technology itself as the tool is really great, but it's also required or, or allowed for maybe a shift in thinking as far as um, who can be successful and giving kids these opportunities. So the thinking used to be that in writing, uh, you wrote for a teacher and you know it was created by a teacher and they looked for certain things. But uh, the thinking on that has changed in that, so I have students in my class who really, really struggle with writing. I'm a sixth grade, like fourth, fifth, and sixth grader. And some of my sixth graders are at a third grade level. Mm -hmm. But with the use of technology, they've been far more successful in getting pieces out there. And maybe that's, um, speech to text or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. uh, but in addition to that, the thinking that <coughs> it's a world that we have a, a relationship with. Uh, so for example, with blogging, I have some sixth graders who in the classroom won't share, and they know they, they struggle a great deal. But when I can connect them to the third graders in Texas that they connect with, mm -hmm. they, they don't worry at all about, you know, they're a big sixth grader, and we talk about it. Now you're the sixth grader. They don't know anything about you. So they can feel confident that the comments that they leave are going to be appreciated and there's a really good chance that it's not going to be made into something that the kids are going to have to feel self-conscious about. So I feel like in those connections and in that shift that the world is your audience, it does build confidence. Uh, I have another student who, with, throughout most of this year, didn't do much writing at all, but with the use of technology and with that change in thinking about what's acceptable and what's not, uh, the last couple of months has just been on fire as far as getting things published and getting things out there and being involved in the classroom. So I think that builds confidence that then allows for those kids that have historically struggled to have an audience that isn't their classmates who may pick on them for other reasons, they may be a target in other areas. They don't have to worry about any of those stresses. They get to work with first graders or third graders who are, you know, thousand miles away, mm -hmm. and they get to be as confident as they want to be online, as, as you guys were saying, um, I can't remember who said it now, but um, the idea that the kids get to build a level of confidence because it's not face-to-face, -face. Mm -hmm. um, and it was you know I think about it, but uh, with that obviously come the lessons, because you know, we all see YouTube comments where it's not face-to-face, -face, so there's yes. a lack of humanization <laughs> to the process, but that's for us as educators to prepare our kids for mm -hmm. on how to handle it correctly um, as the audience and as the, the creator, but it does allow for a lot more success for kids. Mm -hmm. I think there's, um, just on, boo. <laughs> um, the technology has allowed us. Sorry, <laughs> let's try to give you some. I'll just <laughs> yell. <laughs> Is it okay if I talk without a mic? No, yeah. I think for the filming, they need you to have this question. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, he's giving me the look. Okay. Um, so I think with technology, it's allowing us to do things differently, but also allowing us to reach our potential that maybe we thought of before that was really hard to do, and now it's not. So an example would be with Kid Blog, which a lot of people use, especially with uh, younger grades, um, is you can approve comments. So any comments that are made to students, you can prove, and I have one student who, 
he breathes like the rest of us, he thinks and all that, but writing is just a task and a half for him. Um, and so he and I have this agreement because I have to approve all the comments. I can usually figure out what he's trying to say. He writes that poorly. And he knows that I go in and I clean up what he wrote so that the other, he's not embarrassed by his writing. Um, and so that's a way that technology has allowed me, again, to make this kid a player. Whereas before, he would have never done that because it would have been an embarrassment to him to do that. Um, and it's not that he doesn't work hard, he just, he's functionally illiterate at this point. Um, and so that's a way for me to get him into the game. So I can go in and I can edit his work for him um, and put that on. Um, also, I think, you know, in the past, I've always had this thought of, well, we usually have these assignments and these projects, and it's due today. And if you do a really poor job on that, we're going to hurry up and keep going so we can get to the next thing you do a really poor job on. And when we get to there, we're going to keep going. You know, by the end of the year, you're going to do a really poor job with all the stuff we did because, you know, we can't stop. You know, like the car is going. We've got to keep, we got to keep going. And I think with the tools we have today, um, we don't necessarily have to do it that way anymore. Uh, we can look at it very differently. And so um, I have a setup with... Uh, the work that I do with students, and again, it's based a lot on engagement level. There is some um, grading that's or assessment that's on their products that they produce, but a lot of it's how engaged you are. And their grades um, are floating and flexible. So when you get a score on something, that score is not static. You can come in and you can do something about that if you choose to. Um, and I also have some setups where there's kind of a minimum amount everybody needs to get to, and once you get to that point, then there's other options that you can choose. And again, five years ago, I would have been up 23 out of 24 hours trying to do that. And now I only have to be up 17 to do that. So <laughs> technology has definitely um, made, made our lives different because we can be more effective. <laughs>